New Bike Day is absolutely sacred. However, sadly, thanks to a lot of shops running out of stock, it's increasingly harder to come by. So how do we quickly put a new lease of life into our current bike? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how with some really quick things to do to liven up your rig. So we've ridden the bike for say a year or two and it's lost that little something. So today we're gonna to go through some basic procedures to turn the bike, well, or what I believe is termed from drab to fab. So brakes can often be the first indicator that a bike has been flogged so hard it would even have Max Mosley saying pineapple, pineapple, pineapple. And what I mean by that is when your brakes are kind of lacking that bit of punch or that bit of feel, it can really dictate the whole feel of the bike. So that's gonna be the thing we look at first. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna drop the pads out of the bike and just put a splash of water on each one. And then we're just gonna rub them against each other. What this does is removes any glazing on that top surface and it's gonna give you more powerful brakes by meaning the pads themselves have more purchase on that rotor. What can happen when we ride our bikes is the heat almost melts that top surface and it becomes quite shiny and quite smooth and doesn't really generate that large amount of friction needed to slow down our bikes. It can also often be the culprit for noisy brakes as the pads vibrate on the metal rotor. The next thing we're going to look at is lever feel, but we're gonna do the two minute way or probably even less than that. Now we've done videos on how to re-lube the pistons in your caliper and explained the effects that can have on brake performance. But today we're gonna to do it ultra fast, but get your brakes feeling really, really good. So what you do is you get a small flat head screwdriver and you place it between the back of the pad and the caliper and you just lift that pad off the pistons. As you do so, just pump the lever. What this does is brings out the pistons to suit where they need to be and to accommodate correctly for pad wear. Now, as we run our disc brakes and the pad is worn down, the pistons should be coming out to accommodate that. But in moments of excess wear or fast wearing brake pads, this can often not be the case. And it means your bite point gets further and further into the bar, which depending how you like your bike might not suit your riding style at all and can give you a lack of faith in your brakes. We all know how important it is to have a clean and lubricated chain, but there are some other factors at play when we think about the performance of our drivetrains. First of all is alignment. So how do we approach alignment if you don't have the special tooling? The best way is to get your mech into a gear so you can look down the chain at it and perfectly align it with the chain ring. Spin the cranks back and inspect the ring for any bending or the chain for any damage and twists. This is a really good way that you can use the chain as your mark to compare the alignment of the mech and hanger against. It makes it very easy to see if anything is twisted or indeed needs replacing. After that, look at the mech itself. This is a very effective and cheap way of checking the alignment of your mech. If that is the case and the mech is out of alignment, either do the Popeye method and chug a can of spinach and go at it like a man possessed, or just take it to the shop. The latter could well be the better as they will have the correct tools. Either way, the hanger and derailleur need to be well aligned. Now, the more times we twist and deform a metal, the more likely it is to break. So please bear that in mind. And if you're bending it from one extreme position to another, it's probably a good idea to replace it. Another big factor is friction in the cables. So what I want you to do is just release that bolt there to give you some room to play with. And then you can just pull that outer over the inner back and forth to kind of get an idea of how much friction there is there. If there is quite a lot of friction, a drop of lubricant is always a good idea. We've done some great videos on how to tune your rear mech. So I suggest checking them out if you need any more knowledge on the issue. I'd also say that my general approach to tuning gears is that a correctly set up entry level group set will behave far better than an incorrectly set up high level group set. And it's really, really important, no matter where you are on the scale, to maximize the performance of your bike by setting it up correctly in the first place.
I want you to cast your mind back to when you first got the bike. Maybe it was six months ago, maybe it was six years. Either way, probably a lot has happened in the interim. Maybe you're now not so adverse to olives and have become increasingly keen on the musical stylings of Kate Bush. Either way, that's not really important. What is important is you need to ask yourself, has the way you ride bikes changed? And if so, maybe that initial setup in the shop of your suspension is no longer suitable. Suspension settings are set and forget, or at least to an extent. Now, whilst you may have had an experienced shop assistant help you set up the bike when you first got it, any number of factors can mean we demand different things of our suspension. So maybe you now ride harder or on steeper trails. Maybe you progress to bigger jumps, which have more of an emphasis on large amounts of compression. Any of these factors, plus a myriad of others, can mean you need a fresh approach to your suspension. I would say the best investment you can make in your bike is spending half a day getting it set up correctly. Now, that might seem like a bit of an undertaking, but it's really not. To me, the thought of spending several thousand pounds on a bike and not having it set up correctly is, well, it's absolutely balmy if I'm honest with you. So I would suggest getting a pen and paper, getting a shock pump, a small ruler, some volume spacers and some basic tools, and going to a hill that's got about a minute long downhill track. Now, when you're setting up suspension, if you are not methodical, you will not be setting up correctly, unless you just happen to be incredibly lucky and get it dialed absolutely first time, although I somehow doubt that. None of us can get suspension perfect first time. It takes practice and actually training your sights and honing in the crosshairs through repetition. The first thing I want you to do is think about setting sag. Now, a small ruler like this is really helpful in this instance if you don't have any markings on the fork leg. But even then, being millimeter accurate definitely isn't a bad thing. It doesn't matter how you set your sag as long as you consistently do it the same way. And by that I mean position yourself on the bike in a smooth, controlled manner without bouncing around on it. And as long as you can repeat that, then you're gonna get a similar sort of result every single time, which is exactly what we want. Bottom out spacers are a great way to fine tune the end of your stroke. And for me, I think for most riders, it is just that. It's a really good way to tune the end of the stroke. So what I would recommend is, once you've set your sag to around 20% on the fork or between 25 and 30% on the back, depending on the bike, I would say, then go and ride it. If you are bottoming out the bike all too easily, I would suggest adding a volume spacer. Vice versa, if you struggle to reach full travel, I would recommend removing one and then go back to the same pressure. We can come back to pressure to fine tune it later on, but it's really important to only be changing one thing at a time. This is really gonna help you quantify what that change means and how it affects your riding. The next thing I want you to do is to go out onto the trail and experiment. Now that we've set everything on our spring, be it the volume spacers and the air pressure, we're gonna experiment with a damper. Now, if you've got a low speed compression dial, just put it to the middle and experiment it with it either way. Similarly, if you have high speed, some dampers recommend that you put the low speed to the middle to experiment, and then you kind of add the high speed damping as needed. I would also suggest doing something very similar with the rebound. Just don't go two clicks at a time, either way, to help you settle on your best setup. In suspension tuning, this is a term called bracketing, and it's absolutely vital to training in your sight and getting the bike set up correctly. Now the chances are you're gonna find loads of things that just don't work for you. But in doing so, you're going to not only expand your knowledge base, but you're going to find the setup that does. Also, when you come to a different trail or maybe your riding style changes, you're going to know how the bike works with the different adjustments and how to get it set up better for when that moment arises. Once you've set it up, then rinse and repeat if needed. When setting up suspension, if you don't do it systematically, I can assure you, you're not getting the most out of it. Everything is related, not least your geometry. So take your time and get it dialed. The last thing to think about to get your bike feeling brand new is something for a little bit more adventurous. And we're gonna look at the bearings in our linkage. Now, I would personally say that if a bearings had it, then it's had it. 
but if you can't quite face stomaching the cost for a bearing change, then it can be worth trying to give them a new lease of life. So what we're gonna do is remove this cover and with a blade, we're gonna remove the seal of the bearing. But it's really important that you carefully do it from the inside to the out. This will save damaging the seal because what you don't want to do is warp or bend that seal because most of the friction as it is in our bearings comes from seals. So then if you put one that's not even straight, well, you're gonna get quite a large amount of drag and probably undo all your hard work. So I'd recommend just cleaning them up a little bit and adding a thin layer of grease. You don't wanna be packing that bearing because that can sometimes actually impede the suspension's action. What you want to ensure is that the bearings themselves are well lubricated and free of corrosion. Corrosion or any sort of rust is only gonna impede the bearing and add friction to the system, which is exactly what we don't want. I wouldn't recommend removing the bearing to give it this freshen up because often the action of removal can actually damage the bearing. Now that's not a problem if you've got some fresh ones to install, but if you haven't and you're trying to save money, it's probably a road to nowhere. So I would say leave it in the bike, it's only a two minute job and it can really improve the small bump sensitivity of your rear suspension as it has to overcome less friction. And that was it, that is my very quick how-to on how to make your bike feel as good as new. So thanks for watching guys, and please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.